God's grace and peace to you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who loves us with an everlasting love and promises his protection and his presence. Amen. We're talking today about Daniel, and I just couldn't help but think as I listened to Curtis read that again and as I, you know, studied it and, and uh, prepared for this today, this describing of Daniel as one in whom uh, they could find nothing false in his service to the government. Would that we had a few Daniels around today, right? My goodness. And it is perhaps that thought would that we had folks like Daniel around today that I'd like to have us look at this chapter, this focus of the, the story. You know, we've been going through this now. This is 18 weeks together, working our way through the entire Bible. We've made it nearly to the end of the Old Testament, and we will have just two chapters left before we move into the very familiar territory of the New Testament. But this chapter in particular, I think, speaks to us in right now in the situation that we're in, in the times that we live, in the country in which we live, in this really unusual time in our history, because you have Daniel, you have his three buddies, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, now working in a foreign country for a foreign leader, and how do you maintain your integrity? How do you maintain your, uh, not only your own personal, private focus on and commitment to God, but live it out in a public way when you're in a culture that's really opposed to God as you understand him. The Medes and the Persians, the Assyrians, the Babylonians all had their own set of gods. The Israelites, the one true God that they knew as the Heavenly Father that we know today as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God. And, and yet here they are trying to live this out, to do so in this way. And Daniel's even been told he can't pray the way that he's expected to pray. I know back in the 60s, people got the 1960s, I guess I ought to say, now that we're in a whole new uh, century. People got all up in arms when prayer was taken out of schools. You might understand a little bit of that if you were back in that time of Daniel being told here, you can't pray the way you're used to praying. I still think the bumper sticker uh, says it very, very well. As long as there are tests there will still be prayer in school. Dear God, please help me pass, right? They didn't say that there couldn't be prayer at all. It doesn't mean that students can't pray on their own. It just meant this organized way, this way of trying to say that one religion or one expression of Christianity was the supreme overall that all had to follow. That is what was removed. It didn't stop anyone from being a Christian. You have here in Daniel's time such a fascinating situation going on. As you heard that chapter, and as we will do in Bible study here today, we'll actually dig in deeper and explore all of Daniel. Daniel and his three friends have been prepared to serve, be in the service of the king. They were talking about an earthly king. They were prepared with training, with language, with, with the ways of politics and philosophy and so forth. But every single one of us is also in service to the king. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego knew that though they were being put in the service of an earthly king, they would never stop serving their heavenly king. No matter their circumstances, no matter what it might cost them, they would serve him. And the whole book is about some of the consequences and the costs that they faced. Do we remember, regardless of who our judge is in Harris County or our, our governor is in the state of Texas or our president is in the United States of America, do we understand that our real ruler, the one we really give account to, is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Do we remember when we wake up each day that the breath we breathe, the actions we take, the words we speak, the look of 
welcome and respect that we offer or the look of disdain and, and uh, 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 condescension, all of that is in service to our king. I wonder how often we remember that. Daniel, when the law was passed that he was not supposed to pray to any other God except for to the king, still prayed to his king. He meant no disrespect to his earthly king. And, and when the story is over, we heard Curtis read it. You know, uh, king, I have done you no wrong. I've been innocent before you all of my life and, and everything that I've, I've possibly done. But God has sent an angel to rescue me. Jesus sends out his 72 disciples and, and, and they, uh, you know, even the demons submit to their name and he promises that no harm will come to them. They've been given authority over snakes and scorpions and we would presume lions and, and everything else. What a day this was. There's a little kid's song that I, I learned and I've taught a, a few people. Maybe this helps it get into our minds and our hearts. It's from the perspective of the lion, if you can believe that. Roar, 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 roar. I'm a big lion and I want to eat some more. Roar, 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 roar. Here comes Daniel and I'll eat him for sure. Let me tell you about Daniel. He was good every way. He trusted in the Lord and prayed three times a day. But this got him into trouble with the king's evil men. For they grabbed him and they threw him in the lion's den. It's a strange thing, isn't it? Doing the right thing, doing the godly thing can get you in trouble. Now, one of the things that I think is so important for us to get, and I promise you I'm going to spend a lot more time going into this in the uh, Bible class. But one of the things that I hope you notice about Daniel, also if you read the whole chapter or read the whole chapter, you saw it in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, there was the utmost respect for all the authorities, for the king, for other rulers and governors. There was respect. There was not complaining. There was not whining. There was not, uh, I'm going to put down my enemies or those who oppose me. There was respect all the way across the board. When Daniel talks to the king, he says, Lord, king, may you live forever. When he talks to a, his, the, this king's predecessor and that king's asking him, can you tell me what my dream was and can you interpret my dream for me? Daniel says, Nobody can do that, but there is a God in heaven, O king, and he has shown you, and I will tell you what he's shown you, because he's revealed it to me. That respect, it seems to be largely missing in our public discourse. If you're a Republican, there isn't much respect for the Democrats and for those radical leftists. If you're a Democrat, there isn't much respect for those, you know, and the labels and the names and the boxes and everything else. Not a whole lot of respect. Isn't it funny that they have to put the little squares, the little lines on the floor to try to help us remember where six feet is so we can stand apart in a respectful manner until we get past this pandemic? I wish we didn't have to pass rules and, and, and mandates about masks. I wish everyone would realize that if we all wore a mask 95% of the time, if 95% of us wore it 95% of the time, this virus would be dead and gone in six weeks. Do you know that? Six weeks. I wish we didn't have to have those mandates, but I do know this, that whatever laws we have, we should follow them with respect. We should follow the rulers with respect praying for them. We should live, though, as Daniel did, as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did, and as First Peter describes, as aliens and strangers. This world is not your home. Heaven is our home. Heaven is where our king is. Our citizenship is there. That's where we wait our savior from, who came to this earth as a baby, who took on our flesh to redeem those of us in the flesh, but who says there's more than flesh. 
And while we're here, he invites us to remember the greatest thing of all is not how many people we ever preach to or how many demons ever submit to us in his name or how many people we can insult in a, a tweet or whatever it is that we can do. The greatest thing of all is that our names are written in his book of life. And they are written there by the blood of Jesus, the Savior, who would give his life for us. Well, they opened the door and they threw him inside. He could see the lion's teeth and the gleam in his eye. But the angel of the Lord shut the lion's mouth tight. And Daniel praised the Lord and slept through the night. How much more at peace our hearts can be when we are trusting him. Not what it says on whatever our preferred news channel is. Not what it says in the newspaper or the magazines or Facebook. How much more at peace could we be if we turned it all off and we tuned into him? It was interesting. Mother Teresa was once interviewed by a reporter for the BBC. And, uh, you know, in his research, he discovered she never read the newspaper, never watched the news, never listened to the radio. She didn't know a thing about, quote unquote, current events. But when he held a conversation with her for over an hour, it was as if she knew every single thing that really mattered. I wonder if that might be what happens to us. If we turn off the counts and the census and all of it, and we just tuned in to him. You know, that lion could only go, mm, 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 mm. all that lion could say was, mm, 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 mm. with an angel on the lion's mouth, he just said, mm. but when you and I live those lives, we shine like stars in this dark generation, Philippians 2 tells us, or, or we live such lives among pagans that they see our good deeds and they praise our Father in heaven, or as Daniel did, so clear that the king is so moved by his example of faith that he sends an edict out, the whole world, you ought to trust in God the way Daniel trusts in the one true God. When they see how changed the people are around us, bit by bit perhaps, but in very real ways. When the king found out Daniel was okay, he gave thanks to the Lord on that wonderful day. But the king's evil men shook with fear and with dread, because they were served up for breakfast to the lion instead. God's the one that'll take care of other people's fate. God is the one that will see ultimate justice is done. In the meantime, you and I, with the help of Jesus and the help he gives us in the sacrament this morning, you and I walk with God, represent God, rely on God, and respect others in every degree that we can. May God help us do so to his glory. Amen.